FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. Can I ask you a few questions over here away from the hostility, please? You really do. So, I don't, who the fuck are you to tell me a goddamn thing? Fuck your flag, dog. Fuck your flag. This is occupied Dayton. There's a couple of the guys standing there. I'm not a big fan of that word at all. The police. Not even in That's quoting. That's my personal beliefs. Okay. you go back to the tent? No, stop. I, what just, problem? Gross. Okay, I can't take any more of it. I thought, you know, we'll be able to get in as an intro. This is sort of, this is the mindset of what is happening with a certain faction of politics in America. And just watching everything that's been happening, you know, having been involved in the Tea Party uh, and, and, and watching all of this, here you have the Occupy movement, which I, I don't, it, it's not an independent faction. This is, you know, it's a Marxist front group, all of this. Watching all of this happen and seeing all of these red flags that everyone has been telling us about, finally, you, you see what they've been warning you about all come to fruition. It's just kind of interesting. Uh, of course, you know, people who say things like that, you, it just, it's sickening. 866-455-9797, kind of dovetailing into this right now. There's a book out right now. It's called Suicide of a Superpower. It's some heavy stuff. Patrick Buchanan, uh, this is his latest book, and he joins us on the phone right now. Pat, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Good afternoon. Is this Dana? Yes, it is, sir. How are you? Good I to am, talk with you. Well, thank you. I'm doing, uh, I'm doing well. This is a very serious title, Suicide of a Superpower. And uh, I think it uh, underscores something that I have said and believed for a long time and that the threat to our country, uh, really the biggest threat comes from within. And this is what your book is about. Tell us a little bit about it. Sure. It's, uh, you're exactly right. The biggest threat to the United States is not from Iran. If Iran tried to fire some kind of missile at the United States, we'd turn it into a desert in an afternoon. The real danger to the United States comes from the disintegration of our society and really the breakup and breakdown of our nation into political, ideological, social, cultural, moral, and ethnic and, and racial groups that seem to be more and more at war with each other. Uh, the, the rise of hyphenated Americanism, the balkanization of the country, the departure of people separating and moving into enclaves of their own kind, and the idea that we really are not one nation, one people anymore, and the sense among traditionalist Americans, because of some of these cultural, social, moral revolutions in the 1960s, that America is not the good country it used to be. Right. One of the things that I have been reading in a lot of the discussion about your book, and this it, and this is something that, of course, you know, the groups like the Soros funded like Media Matters, and you have Think Progress, and all of these entities out there, mm -hmm. uh, they've they've because there's there's a lot of really good stuff in your book. They've come at you for uh, so, a couple of the things that you've written in here. There, there's Chapter Four uh, that you mentioned, the end of White America is what Chapter Four is called. Did right. you? How did you mean this title? Because a lot of a lot of them are are saying that this is this means that Pat Buchanan's calling for a race war. That's, to sum it up in layman's terms, it's what they're alleging. Well, first off, the end of white America is the cover of Newsweek and a column by uh, John um, Meacham in Newsweek two years ago. That's where it came from. Secondly, as for calling for a race war, I didn't call for a race war, and I don't believe one's coming. But right. my colleague, Carl Rowan, who has subsequently died, wrote a book called The Coming Race War in 1995, and I don't recall him being condemned for that. <laughs> so, and I, I don't agree with him. I think the, the danger to America is balkanization. It is right. the fact that there's people really don't like each other and detest each other in many ways. You see this manifest in the toxic, uh, toxicity of our politics and the deadlock. And when that uh, Gabrielle Giffords, congresswoman, is shot by that berserker who also killed right. six other people and wounded 13... The Daily Cost puts up a headline that says, Mission Accomplished Sarah Palin. Yep. I mean, these type of things are appalling. They didn't happen before, but they're happening everywhere now. And this and this sort of really just vitriolic kind of you know just to use their word the vitriolic rhetoric I you, you, I've seen this more and more with this Occupy movement. Now you write in here when you discuss the disintegration of a nation, uh, you've written quote Meanwhile the state is failing in its most fundamental duties. It's no longer able uh, to defend our borders, balance our budgets, or win our wars. 
And yet all of the focus, it seems, from our government has gone away from this, and it's focusing on entitlements. Entitlements don't build a nation. And, and Is there any example, Mr. Buchanan, of entitlements ever building a powerful nation? No, there is not. But there is some example back through history of spending by governments and for the populace and redistributions of income and and taking the money from those who succeed and work for it and giving it to those and creating not only an entitlement state but a vast welfare state of dependence that this is the beginning of the road downhill for the united states you know i grew up in washington dc which was four hundred thousand black folks four hundred thousand white folks and from the thirties to the fifties the thirties was the depression the fifties were they were good times but they were not you know super prosperous times Nobody had food stamps then. Nobody. Right. Today, one in every five people in D.C. lives off food stamps. Right. Nobody had Medicaid then, and now there's an enormous number of people have it. you got Head Start. you got all these other programs to the point, uh, Dana, where some people can live their whole lives, simply live off the federal government. Yeah, and, and, and these there's one study that I saved. This came out uh, from the Christian Science Monitor discussing how the standard of a living is dropping for America. Not only that, but our, our misery index is at an all-time high, and it's more difficult now to, to start a business in the United States. We used to make this list, this international list of top 10 countries in which to start a business. The United States is no longer on that list. This all goes to exactly with what you're saying in your book, Suicide of a Superpower, because these are all due to policies that come straight down from Washington, D.C. You know, I've argued, too, ever since I was running for president, and it's now the statistics are in suicide of a superpower. One in every three manufacturing jobs, about five and a half million, disappeared in the last decade. 55,000 factories disappeared in the United States in the last decade. China is now the largest manufacturing nation on Earth. The United States used to produce half of all the, the goods the world produced, mm. and it's now declining dramatically. Things we made here for ourselves, we now buy abroad from radios and TVs and flat panel screens and cars and clothes and shoes and, radi- and bicycles and motorcycles. All of these things are now made abroad. They're sent into the United States, and the American work, I mean, the middle class, blue collar workers is dying out in America. Right. And well, and abs- if it, it's not dying up from the economic policies, then you have uh, like the National Labor Relations Board going after companies like Boeing outright. When you see the uh, the movement, I think that was designed to counter the Tea Party, you see them occupying public spaces in New York and in Los Angeles. Does it strike you as just unbelievable? And I know this is kind of rhetorical, but does this strike you as unbelievably ironic that here you have a generation that's more subsidized by government than any other generation in American history that's out there protesting? the very entities from which it feeds? Right. <laughs> one of their main demands is absolution from all student loans. Now, I can understand that one. <laughs> <laughs> but I had my friend Sean Hannity, I was on his TV show last week, and he said they had interviewed this fellow and, and played up the one sort of a uh, typical fellow down there at the uh, Occupy Wall Street, and they found out the next night he was a, wall, he was a trust fund baby. <laughs> Right, he was one of those the Bolshevik trust fund babies. Yes, yes, I would so yeah. That, those pe- that's priceless, absolutely priceless. Well, this book, Suicide of a Superpower, will America survive to twenty twenty five? One last quick question, because we got to get rolling. I know you do too, as well. What is this something that we can, from this point, can we still fight back and and take back the country and win? I think we can win politically, but some of the things that have happened the the dechristianization of America, the the, the collapse of the culture, the, the rapid rise in illegitimacy, in the, in the, and especially in minority communities, those are very, very hard to turn around, and, and the massive welfare state is, uh, is subsidizing them. Yeah. Oh, gosh. That's a lot of work to be done. Pat Buchanan, Suicide of a Superpower, thanks so much for joining me this afternoon. Thank you. All right. Take care.